Yeah, shut up, you stupid bird. This is the 2021 Honda Trail 125, and it is the latest rendition of the Honda Trail bikes. And it's not just an awesome motorcycle, it's an investment. Or that's at least what we're gonna tell our wives when we convince them that we're gonna buy it. And I'll explain about that later. But to truly understand this bike, we gotta learn the history of it. Now this is my 1970 Honda Trail 90, and I just, it's one of my most favorite bikes. And it's honestly one of the coolest bikes out there. But the history even starts even before that, but I don't have actually an example to show you guys. It starts in 1960 where Honda realized a discrepancy in the sales at a little Honda dealership in Idaho, in the mountain areas. They saw a huge spike in sales of these little Honda 50s, these little, you know, road going step through scooters. So they reached out to figure out what was actually going on down there. And what happened was the owner of that Honda dealership took these little Honda 50s and started putting knobby tires on it and put a bigger final drive gear on it and started calling them trail bikes and started selling them to people just to, to go up the mountains and go through the trails and people were loving it. It was, it was blowing up at this dealership. Honda liked the idea so much that the next year, 1961, Honda released their own version of that bike, the CA100T Trail 50. It's kind of a long name. And this was the beginning of Honda getting into the off-road space. Now over the years, these bikes adapted and they grew and they changed models. They had a 50, then a 90, then a 70, then a 110. And not only did they become better bikes, but they also grew in reputation. Farmers and hunters and fishers and campers and outdoor guys. They just, the reputation of this thing being just a great utility vehicle, you know, to go out and do a lot of fun stuff outdoors, it just, it just blew up. And if you don't see it yet, let me show you. It starts with one of the most reliable Honda engines ever made. They put this engine in a lot of different vehicles. And this was the engine that the Chinese cloned to make every other pit bike ever made, ever. It's a three-speed automatic transmission, so you can't stall it, with a high-low gear. On the other side, you can flip a little lever, and it's just all low gear. So if you're really doing some mud or some big hills or something like that, the claim is this thing can creep up anything in first gear, low speed, and it, to be honest with you, it, it, it can. You also notice the placement of the exhaust. This is like a scrambler style exhaust, and it comes up real high. That's because you can go up to water about that high. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, well, Sean, the engine's down here, the intake's down here. Actually, it's not. And this is where the air filter is, but it's actually sucking air from up inside here. So you can take this thing up to water to right there. This is a special add-on that you don't see on these bikes very often. This is a cool little gas tank. Um, all the bikes came in a rack. This one actually came in a seat that was built on top of the rack, which I don't know if that was stock or aftermarket. The gas tank is located right up here, also very high on the motorcycle. And one of the coolest features ever, sometimes you gotta put it in the back of a truck or maybe inside of a van or store it someplace. You pull that lever up here and you can store it like this, which it now it only takes up 18 inches. I, I still think that's one of the coolest features of any motorcycle. And then you just lock it back in. Now back when this thing was brand new, this thing cost less than 300 bucks. If, but if you were gonna buy one today, like even a functional but rough looking version of it, you know, it's gonna cost you at least a thousand bucks. And if you were gonna find one in mint condition, which I've seen a couple, perfect shape, looks like it's off the showroom, you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up paying around like 3,800 bucks. So if you would've bought one of these things 50 years ago, and your buddy would've bought gold 50 years ago, and if you kept yours in nice shape, you would be ahead of him who invested in gold. So in a way, it can be an investment, but if you would've put that money in the stock market, you would've been, it would've been much higher. I am not a financial advisor, do not take anything I say as financial advice. So that kinda leaves a problem. If you wanna find a nice version of these, what are you gonna do? Well, Honda solved that problem in 2019. They didn't actually solve that problem until 2021. When they came out with this amazing machine. Now you can, you can easily tell it's got all the same characteristics of that one. The tank is under this seat. There's a, there's a keyhole, you pop it up. Uh, it's got the cool rack, this one's painted. It's got the high exhaust. Also the intake is the same spot on this side and comes up in here and sucks air from, from up underside the rack. But instead of having a 90cc motor, it has a 125cc motor. Same motor that we're seeing in the Grom, we're seeing in the, uh, the Super Cub, and then we're seeing in the Monkey. Just a very, very reliable motor. Tons and tons of aftermarket parts for it. And they really did a great job of just keeping the same feel of the older bike. It is a little bit bigger. It does still have a kickstart. 
also has electric start. And it's, it's just a modern version of it. It's fuel injected, it's got cool LED lights, but it's just as off-road capable as it's ever been, and it's most likely it's more off-road capable. It's pushing around seven and a half horsepower, about seven and a half foot-pounds of torque, which does not sound like a lot. We ride motorcycles with 100 horsepower. This has less than a, a tenth of that. It also weighs around 240 pounds, so it's lighter. It's not super fast, it's just tons and tons of fun. It's got a tiny little gas tank, just over a gallon, but it gets 115 miles to the gallon. The only problem with these bikes right now is they are basically impossible to find or to get. How did you find one, Sean, if they're so impossible? Well, when Honda rolled it out, when Honda released that they're gonna make this in 2019, in 2020, people started flooding the dealerships and saying, they say, the MSRP is 3,800 bucks. It's a pretty cheap little bike. They start, you know, people started putting money down in deposits for them. Now, only, now each, each dealership had no idea how many they were gonna get. So they were taking deposits, but then they found out they were only gonna get one or two maybe in 2021. And some dealerships didn't even get one. The demand was much larger than the actual supply. Now, Honda likes to do this when they first release something out and they get a big, a big demand and a, a lot of hype. And then probably in the later years, it'll be easy to get, to, it'll be easy to buy one. But I called over a hundred Honda dealerships to say, do you have one available? Nope. Do you have one that's not spoken for that's coming in soon? Nope. How big's your waiting list? And they're like, like nine or 10 people on this list. And I, I kept on calling, kept on calling. I called all over the country. Everyone said the exact same thing until I talked to one dealership about two and a half hours away and they said we have one but the guy is unresponsive he's not he's not re he's not returning back to our phone calls so if he doesn't get back to us in a certain amount of days we'll let you have this one two months later i actually ended up getting it and now i love it and i'm gonna keep it forever so let's go take it for a spin i'm gonna show you how much fun it is riding something like this and who should be riding something like this all right guys let's do the words of wisdom before we do the test drive uh luke 11 13 if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? The Holy Spirit being an amazing gift. Alright, kickstand up. Turn the thing. Um, so there's no clutch. This is why like, anyone can drive it. And neutral is the whole way down. Right? So you just pop it up. Now you're in gear. The ABS light will be on until you hit like, I don't know, five miles an hour. And then it turns off. And then once you get to about here, roll off the throttle and shift. And then go as fast as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can until you have to stop. And then brake as fast as you possibly can so you don't hit something. And then really get some good use out of that ABS. The best way to describe this is if you've ever ridden like a moped, you know, a, mo a moped is going to be around 0.9 horsepower, less than, a, less than an entire horsepower, so it's very low, um, but you always wanted more. You like the fun, you like how fun it was, how light it was, it didn't weigh anything, you liked how cool you felt when you were going like 25, but that was about it, but you're like, man, I wish I could go 55, oh, if I could just go 55, I could cruise on the highway. And this thing can do 55. This is all those things, but still get, keeping that same essence of a, of a small, little, uh, tiny bike. And, you know, like the thing says, you could take it anywhere. You could ride this thing through a river that was over two feet high, and you'd be fine. You could take this to a field. You could take it through, you know, single track. You could do whatever you... You could take this thing anywhere. Even pick it up, stick it in the back of your truck, stick it in the... This will probably fit in the in the back seat of a pickup truck. And because Honda makes a great reliable motorcycle, this thing's gonna last for a long time. I also like that they didn't make it too overly electronic. Um, like they did with the, uh, the Super Cub. There's no special special uh you know key fob key it's just regular regular looking keys um it's just the only electronics here is right there on the gate is just the gauge that's simple that should be that should be able to you know work for half a century because when i look at bikes like this that's what i'm thinking i'm like you know in 40 years from now is it still going to be awesome because i'm riding other hondas that are 40 50 years old and they're awesome 
that's kind of what I'm buying it for. If I was going to buy something that's just, you know, it's going to last me for one year, I'd go buy something cheaper. All right, now we're going to jump on the highway, but we're not going to do zero to 60 because it really can't. Well, you know, we'll, 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 go, we'll go as fast as we can. Uh, it won't it won't go up to 60, though. Maybe downhill. All right. Go. Now, it's definitely a million times faster than the, uh, the, the, the Trail 90. I've never ridden the Trail 110. I'm guaranteed it's faster than that. What's cool about it is, one, it does feel good going 55, but I know, you, I know you're not buying it to go that fast. But if you have to, if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm three exits away from my work or whatever, it's going to have no problem doing it. And if you live in Pennsylvania, most of your speed limits are 55. Except for right now, it's only 65, but that's fine. That's how fast, that's, that's just telling me that I can't go any faster. It doesn't mean I can go a little bit slower. 54. Actually, apparently there are some tracks back here. Maybe we should go find them. And this is why you buy a Trail 125. I mean, I'm going, I'm cruising pretty quick on this pretty rough, nicely mowed grass patch. I think there's actually a way for me to get back to my shop from here. Oh. There we go. How do I get to those tracks? I think they're on the other side of the railroad tracks. For a, there we go. That's a track. Let's turn this thing around. Thorns. No. Yup, this is what this bike was made for. It's not what I was made for, but. Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Yikes. I don't want to be here. <laughs> and now we're back. Alright guys, that's why the Trail 9 is the best. We'll see you guys later. Remember, it is not what you're riding, but where you're going. And I did, I, I couldn't find my gloves this morning. Uh, so, don't be like me. Go get some good M1 Moto gloves at bikesandbearsgear.com. See you guys later.